Hey guys, I'm Luke Reinhardt, owner and head instructor of the Clinch Academy. Very excited uh, for your interest in our programs. Um, putting together this quick little video for you. It's an introductory video that's going to go over some very basic uh, positions and mechanics to help you feel more comfortable um, to come try one of our group classes to kind of give you just a little taste. Um, our slogan is Clinch Academy Battle Tested, Family Approved. These techniques have been battle tested for hundreds of years, thousands of years, depending on uh, what we're talking about. But Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is rather new, you know, to the U.S. Um, within the last hundred years. So, but these are the techniques that are now being taught in law enforcement, in the military, uh, very highly effective self-defense techniques for today's world. And family approved, you know, we, we want to make sure that you guys coming in uh, feel like this is a safe place as it should be. Uh, we keep it clean, you know, clean environment, clean speech, clean attitudes, clean technique. You know, we're all about just providing a positive and safe atmosphere for you to come in and be a part of. Our beginner program is designed for beginners. You know, you're not going to come in and get uh, roughed up, you know. Um, you're going to come in and you're going to learn um, techniques. You're going to practice techniques. And when you feel comfortable, you can start to drill and uh, practice those techniques uh, through live rolling and drills. But it's not something that you're going to come right in and do. And then even when we do that, you know, nobody's trying to kill each other in here. You know, it's not that you're coming in here and you're getting in a street fight every, you know, every time you come to class. It's a very, it can be a very playful thing. It's very fun. It's very good for your mind. It's very good for your body. And so I just want to kind of like bring that message to you because I know a lot of times people are hesitant uh, to join an MMA academy thinking that maybe, you know, it's just all these dangerous, crazy things, but really it's not, you know, it can be, yes. Um, and certain schools might have that kind of attitude um, and certain people might have that kind of attitude, but here we promote a very family friendly atmosphere, very safe atmosphere. And on top of that, you're still gonna learn legitimate uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that's gonna teach you how to defend yourself. We can get you to a very high level of competition if that's what you like. Uh, but that's not what everybody wants. In fact, the majority of the people that come in just want to come in, um, build confidence, get in shape, meet friends, and have a good time. You know, so uh, don't let fear stop you from coming in. I guarantee you, you'll have a good experience. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you a quick technique we call the shrimp. Um, the shrimp is a technique that we use in many different ways, and there's many ways to shrimp. Um, but it's a technique that we uh, rely on a lot. It helps us escape positions, certain positions. It helps us to maneuver our hips um, in a certain way to set up certain attacks. So here's what the shrimp is. So basically, if you look from this angle, I have opposite foot and hand that I'm going to base to the mat. And this is what we call a safety position. And I'm going to show you what we call a hip escape and build it all the way down to the shrimp. So the hip escape motion is in the safety position, I can lift myself up and I can swivel my hips, right? And from here, I can stand up effectively by lifting my hips up, swinging them back and bringing my leg through. And this will bring me to my feet um, in a safe manner. You'll learn more about that hip escape for sure. But the hip escape is a technique that we use a lot. I can do it on two sides. Basically, opposite hand and foot. And just to practice right now, I'm just swinging the hip back a little bit. Notice I'm always facing the same direction as I do it. Boom. So I can take that same movement and bring it down to the forearm, right? And I can do the same kind of hip swivel, back and forth. And then I can also bring it down to the shoulder. And I lean on the shoulder and look how I can swivel the hip. Like this. Tuck the elbows in, lean on the shoulder, basing opposite foot and shoulder, lift the hip up just a little bit, and let it swivel out. As I do that, I can pull this knee, the non-base leg, knee to my chest. Pull it up, and then push it to the ceiling. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Hip out, pull the knee up, and push it to the ceiling. Hip out, pull the knee up, and push it to the ceiling. 
So watch how I do that in a backwards motion now. Lean all the way on this side. Don't stay flat. So the way I just demonstrated here is more of an escape movement, escaping out of bottom positions. But sometimes we're just going to do it like this, just to get the hips out, like that. Later you're going to see Coach Nate talk about uh, the scissor sweep, how you sh shrimp uh, to get into position. And this is the move you're doing. You're basing from the foot to the opposite shoulder, hips go out, and you'll be in what we call like a, a scissor guard position later. You'll see this movement. Okay, another really important technique is the bridge. The bridge is another escape movement uh, utilizing the power of the legs and hips. So a bridge is basically when I'm flat on my back, flat on my shoulders, I want to bring my feet in tight to my hips. And basically just push off the feet and lift the hips up. All right, that's your basic bridge. To really get a good bridge, I'm going to look over my shoulder one way or the next, typically the direction that I'm going to bridge to. And I come up on that shoulder as I continue lifting the hips like this. There's a warm-up that we'll do during the stretches where it's just bridge and reach. Bridge and reach. Notice how I look over the shoulder. My head doesn't touch the floor. And I can carry this all the way over as an escape movement. Like this. This is called the bridge. Very important technique. All right, guys, we're going to start out with uh, just introducing what we call the map. And the map is kind of like your basic positional progression from the least of the top positions to the greatest of the top positions. And as I go through it right now, we're going to give you just mainly the general idea. We're not going to get real specific with all the details. I'm going to try to make the steps as clear and easy as possible so you're getting the general idea. We do have other instructional videos that go deeper into detail and then also obviously the classes uh, will go deeper into detail. But the point of this video is just to kind of help you get started, give you a general idea of what you're trying to do, where you, where you want to try to be, and, and how to get there. All right, so starting what we call the guard position. So Coach Nate's going to get me in the guard position. And the guard position is whenever you're on your back, you want to have your legs wrapped around your opponent's waist. And this is what we would call a closed guard position. We have many guard positions. This is the closed guard. All right. Whenever I'm on top of the closed guard, I want to control the biceps to start. All right. I just want to get control of the center. Now, as I control the center, right now my stance is square. I want to angle my stance by stepping back with one knee and bringing the other knee to the middle of his hips. Now that's going to create my lead side. So my lead side hand is going to grab his belt and push it up towards his chin. And as I do that, I turn my hip out towards his ankles and it starts to create pressure. Sometimes it hasn't opened yet. Sometimes it does. Doesn't matter either way. My hand goes on the inside of the knee and then I push the knee down. And here I'm using my weight. I'm not trying to use arm strength. But I'm just leaning onto the knee. From here, I'm going to do what we call a knee cut pass. I'm going to step over his leg with the back and then cut across with the front. You'll notice how I keep the foot hooked inside for now. From here, I'm going to get upper body control. I go under his far side armpit and then around his head and I lock my hands together palm to palm. And now I'm going to pass the guard completely as I bring my knee to his head and then I sprawl my hip to the mat. This is called cross body position. Go ahead and rotate this direction a little bit. So now I just passed his leg. So he's getting less and less control of me. From the cross body, I want to take my hands and just push off the mat and shoot my knee up. This is what we call knee on the belly position. I bring my knee to his belly. 
I have one knee to the belly and one leg posted out from my base and my balance. My hands can be grabbing the lapel and the knee to help kind of pull as I drive the knee through to give pressure. It makes it very difficult for the person on the bottom to breathe. So this is knee on the belly position. So I go from cross body, base to hands, post up to knee on the belly, leg side knee to the belly, head side leg to the mat, foot to the mat, not knee to the mat. From here, I want to go to mount. So I'm going to control his head, I kind of pull his chin in, base, bring my outside knee to the armpit, the knee on the belly goes over as we hug the hips with the knees, and then we cross our feet, our ankles under the hips or under the knees, and control the head. My arm's going to go under the head, and maybe even grab some cloth over here as I push my shoulder into his cheek and keep a good base. This is mount position. You can see his position's getting worse and worse. Mine's getting better and better. From the mount position, I can move to what we call back mount. And this can happen different ways, but a lot of times uh, with your opponent, uh, they tend to want to turn their back to get out. That's one of the things they want to do uh, when they don't know how to get out properly is they try to turn and stand. That would look like this. He's going to try to turn, try to stand up, maybe shake me off, and maybe get on top of me or stand up or something else. Okay? So to prevent that, I use the back mount. And I actually want him to turn, I just don't want him to stand. Okay? So I'm gonna, you'll see as he turns, I'm going to slide my feet inside his hips. And this is going to lock his hips out so that he can't stand. We roll that way so we're rolling into the camera. So he turns up, I open my knees and let him go. And as he turtles, I keep the base of my hands and look, my feet hooks go right in. And my feet are just sole to sole together on the inside of the hips. Now my hips are centered on his spine on the lower back. I don't want to be too high or he can still back out and shake me off. I got to keep my hips centered on his spine to the lower back. And now my upper body can just I can slide a hand over his forearm. I can slide an arm around his neck. Either way to get leverage to arch my hips and flatten him out. So once I extend the hips, I'm locking his hips out. And then finally, you can see obviously this is the worst position for him and the best for me. There's not really much he can do to harm me right now, but I can do a lot to get him if it were self-defense. I could even be throwing elbows here that he just can't stop, all right? Uh, and I also have the choke, what we call the rear naked choke. When I do the rear naked choke, I'm sliding my hand under his chin until my elbow gets under his chin. And if my elbow doesn't get there by sliding, then I push his elbow over to it, or my, his chin over to my elbow. From here, I'm gonna grab my bicep as high up as I can and then make a wedge behind his head. Glue our heads together, drive the head towards the mat as I squeeze gently. You'll notice that tap right there, that means <coughs> stop, all right, because he's getting choked. If I were to hold this choke for about five more seconds after that tap, he would be asleep and out cold, all right? So we're always training with caution and care for our opponents. We're, when we do a submission, we're waiting to hear that tap and we make sure we let go when it happens.
Okay, so we'll talk a little bit more about the choke. So I have this, the hooks look like this when we're upside down, just feet sole to sole. And the choke is coming over the shoulder, under the chin, all right? And most of the time when I do this, I don't wrap, but I slide my thumb, my wrist, and my forearm across that throat as deep as we can. And then once again, we want the chin above the elbow. So I'm gonna push that over there and go a little deeper. Now my hand's gonna grab my bicep up as high as I can, even up towards the shoulder as my elbows pinch together. This hand, I wanna slide all the way down as deep as we can go and then hide it with my head. So what happens here is I can choke him with one arm, but he can pull this one arm off pretty easy to defend. So I can lock this arm with this one, right? So he tries to pull that same arm and it's stuck. But now he might go for this one instead. And he can even elbow lock me here if he wants to, like this, okay? So I need to defend this arm and this arm. So if I go here and I even just go on top of the head, he can still slide that off. I need to hide it. So I stick it in and then I lock it right there. Now he can't get it out. Meanwhile, I'm squeezing and it's going to be too late for him. All right, so again, we're going to slide under the chin. Make sure the chin's above the elbow. As I bring my elbows together, I'm locking in hand number one, so I'm hiding it. And then I hide hand number two. I go palm facing me, just wedge it in, and then make a fist. And that makes it tighter. Heads together. And then to finish, I push my chest against his back, and then I roll my shoulders back and squeeze all at the same time. And I'm doing this with gradual pressure. I'm, I'm giving him plenty of time to tap out. I'm expecting him to tap, and then when he does tap, I let go. All right, once again, if, if I didn't let go, uh, he would fall asleep. He's cutting off the oxygen and the blood flow to his brain. So. Uh, once that happens, he passes out, and if I hold him for too long, it's possible that I could kill him. So it's very important that we're always paying attention for the tap, we're always letting go when our partner does tap, and we always give him plenty of time to do that as well by being nice with our submissions. We don't want to hurt one another, we want to practice, learn, and get better, and we want to be competitive in that even at some point, but their goal is never to hurt anybody. We can do the choke like this. We can do it face down, like you saw on the mat. We could even be sideways like this. And I can arch my body to make it more effective. All right, so in our mat position that we saw earlier, we started in this guard position. And then I began to pass the guard and progress all the way to the back mount position, which is the greatest of the top positions. Now, if you are on the bottom, you want to get the guard position. You saw that when I passed the guard, I went to crossbody, Coach Nate was on the bottom. When I was mounted on him, Coach Nate was on the bottom. Knee in the belly, he was on the bottom. When I got back mount, he was on the bottom. And in this situation, he's also on the bottom, but he actually has an advantage when he has his legs around my waist. Because with his legs around my waist, he can sweep me and he can submit me multiple ways. All right? so. My objective when I'm inside somebody's guard is to pass the guard, okay? His objective is to sweep or submit me from the guard. And you'll learn a lot about this position. You'll learn a lot about distance management and how to be safe from punches and strikes and all of that as well. Uh, this is very basic level uh, for the intro. So um, what we're gonna look at right now is what we call a scissor sweep. It's a guard sweep that takes Coach Nate from the bottom position to the top position. And you're going to see how he utilizes uh, the strength of his legs and leverage in order to do that. He's going to go from the bottom guard all the way to that mount position. So he's kind of like, you know, his mat in the same position is going to take him to the mount. And then that could eventually take him to the back mount as well as far as progressing in position. But right now we'll just see the sweep from bottom guard to mount position. 
All right, guys, so we're in a good position right here. Uh, we got the control with the legs, and uh, he's gotten bicep control, which is pinning my arms down. So we never want to force anything. Uh, so I'm just going to reach up, bend at the elbows, and grab his sleeves right around his elbows. So this starts my steering wheel. I can uh, control his upper body pretty well by pulling down and pushing up on the other side. So now uh, I've decided I'm going to sweep him to my right. So that means I'm going to open my guard, put my feet flat on the floor, and using my left leg, I'm going to push off as I shrimp away from the direction I'm actually going and get on my side. So I get on my side and sweep, and with the space I've created, my outside leg should be able to slide right up into his chest, and my close foot puts right on the hip, and I go to what's called a scissor guard. So right now I want to stretch him out. So pushing on the knee on the chest and the foot on the hip, and holding on to the sleeves, I start to extend my body away, and that puts a lot of pressure on uh, Coach right now. So what I want to do when I get ready is he's not going to like this. So as I keep putting more pressure, he probably wants to drive into me. And as he does that, I pull him forward. My bottom leg comes off the hip and goes right here and blocks the knee. So as I do a kick with the leg in the chest, a sweep backwards with the leg propping the knee, I pull down on my right arm and drive up with my left arm as I look in the direction I'm trying to sweep him in. As he goes over, my foot hugs the hip, all right? It's going to help pull myself to mount. So grabbing on the sleeves, pumping off my elbow, I pull myself up to mount. And then immediately like we looked at before, smash it down, reach around, grab that sleeve, drive the head, and cross my ankles from my mount position. All right, so same thing. He has bicep control, grabbing the sleeves. Keep going to the mat. And I want to make sure I keep my knees pinched. I don't want to be lazy here because he can start to pass if I drop my legs. So I want to keep a good knee pinch uh, just until I get to my position. So using my left leg to post, I shrimp out and get on my right side. Knee goes in the chest, hooks the hip, foot goes on the hip on the opposite side, and now I extend my body and put pressure. Now, when he doesn't like that pressure, he tries to drive in. I pull him in, prop the foot, kick with the chest, uh, the knee chest, slide on the bottom with the foot, turn the steering wheel, and take him over. Immediately hug the hip on the opposite side, pulling on the sleeves, getting to mount position, shoring up, pressure, crossing the ankles, and keeping on the other side. And there's your scissor sweep. Alright, so an extra bonus tip for you guys. So this is just very common and when you're practicing, if sometimes you don't make the distinction, then it can it can be difficult. Alright? So Coach Nate's going for the scissor sweep just as usual. But my base is really wide. My knees are just wide. That's all. I may be doing that intentionally or I may just not know. Okay? But if he tries the scissor sweep by blocking the knee, I'm not gonna go. So he's gonna add a quick little extra step that shows you what to do when the knee's wide. So when the knee is wide and he's opened up his base is because he knows I'm trying to sweep him with the sweep, so that's his first reaction. So instead of propping here, we're actually gonna put our foot on the knee, and this turns into a push sweep. So I'm actually gonna push the leg, my leg straight, which is gonna collapse his base on that side, and then I'm gonna turn the steering wheel kick. Everything's the same, hugging the hip, pulling up on the arms, going to mount, wrapping up the head, crossing the ankles and getting the top spot. Okay guys, so I'm stuck under this mount position, a very dangerous place for me to be. I mean, in jiu-jitsu, he can submit me. It's very difficult, almost impossible for me to submit him in this position. And if this was self-defense, once again, uh, he can punch down on me and ring terror here. My head has nowhere to go. 
Okay? And if he's posturing himself up, he can reach me, I can't reach him. And this is going to apply even if my arms are longer. He can create that, that angle to where that's just impossible for me to do. All right, so very, very bad position for me to be in. I need to know how to get out. Okay, I'm even going to demonstrate how to deal with the strikes briefly because it's that important. So if my opponent was sitting up to hit me, I don't want to just try to like grab and block and do this because he's going to win this battle. Okay, I need to close this distance as soon as possible. So I am going to create what we call a shield. I'm just going to put my hands on my forehead and put my elbows in the way of the strikes. But as I'm doing that, I'm going to lift my hips. I'm going to use this bridge mechanic that I showed earlier. And I'm going to add a little knee bump to it. So my knee is actually going to bump his hands forward, his body forward, to put his hands on the mat. So as he's striking at me, I'm going to bump him forward, a bridge and bump. And as soon as those hands hit the mat, I'm going to go over one shoulder and under the other, okay? This is a reverse seat belt grip. And from here, I need to continue breaking his posture down by pulling the back of his head. And the higher I go, the more leverage I have to tuck his chin and bring his head down. And now I just look my face into his, his neck. And although he might still smack me a little bit, the dangerous knockout strikes are no longer there, okay? He can weigh a little bit, but I'm pretty safe, pretty safe for the moment, okay? And I'm going to reverse my seatbelt real quick so I can bridge to your side because you see one arm is over, one arm is under, and when I do the bridge, I'm always going to trap the arm on the over side. So I'm going to switch it up just so you can see better. So I'm here, I break his posture down, and now this arm is going to slide over his elbow and trap it to the body. All right, I'm going to keep my hands locked together because Right now, he's trying to beat me up, and I don't want to get beat up, so I gotta stay connected always. Anytime I let go, he's back up hitting me again. All right, so I have to keep the connection always. So I trap the arm. All right, and then a safety tip for Coach Nate, for the guy on top, is look how he's hugging my shoulder right now. Okay, if he keeps his palm down to the mat like it was, when I go to bridge, I'm gonna roll his wrist, and that's gonna create pressure on his wrist and possibly sprain or hurt his wrists. So if, just for safety purposes, he's going to hug my shoulder. Now I block the arm on this side, right? So I want to block the foot on that same side. So look, I take my foot and I just put it on the outside of his. All right, both of my feet are based flat to the mat and I want to use that bridge mechanic in order to roll him over. The focus is to go straight up first, looking in the direction that I want to go. So I look, and I go straight up. Look how I throw his head and I throw his shoulder to the mat. And now his weight is off. I just follow the weight. I open my hands. Get that bicep control so that I'll be ready to pass the guard. So again, when my opponent sits up to hit me, I need to bump him down right away. Once I bump him down, go over the shoulder, under the shoulder, and clamp the hands together. Then we need to make sure we bring this posture down. From here, the over side, the one that's over the shoulder, slides down to the elbow and traps the elbow to the body. Keep it tight so that he can't sit back up. Trap the foot on the same side. So if I go back a step, if I try to move him in that direction and I don't block his hand, look what he does with his hand. He bases. If I have his hand but don't have his leg, look what he does with his leg. He bases and I'll never be able to roll him. So I have to trap the arm and the leg in order to get this roll to work. So I got that arm trapped, now I trap the leg. And now I'm not trying to just roll sideways. If my opponent's heavy, I have no power in that direction. My power is up, it's the thrusting of the hip. So I look in the direction I wanna go, and then I thrust the hip up, and then I follow around. You notice how I open my hands before they get smashed uh, behind his back on the mat. I open him up and then I come to bicep control right away. Thank you guys for trying out our introductory video. We hope you enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you on the mat soon. Another thing that's important to understand is that when we do begin drilling, you know, in class, you're learning techniques, you're training the techniques, but then we have like open mat time where you're going to like roll live with different people uh, when you're comfortable. And but with that, 
you got to keep in mind, it's not a street fight, it's not a self-defense situation, it's not a real-life situation every time that you're in open mat. You know, it can be very playful, and it should be very playful, you know, you, there's different percentages of rolling, 25, 50, 75, and 100 percent, you know, so um, really should spend most of the time in 50, 25 percent kind of with a playful ad attitude, especially in the beginning. Don't worry about being so competitive, uh, so tense, try to relax, you know, uh, experience uh, the techniques that are even being done to you and learn from them and it doesn't have to be this this rough thing every time that you come in it can be very playful I always think of it or describe it as you know two dogs you can look at two dogs and when they're fighting it is ferocious it's mean you know but when two dogs play they're using the same techniques the same movements as they use when they fight ferociously, but when they play, it's very gentle, it's very fun. And that's how jujitsu really should be practiced. You know, there's a time to be intense when you're training for competition and belt evaluations and things like that. There's a time to be playful, which is really most of the time, so that you're able to learn better, to think clearer, and obviously to prevent injuries and uh, getting hurt yourself or, or hurting somebody else. So, a uh, very important topic when it comes to how to train properly.